<laughs> oh, hey, we're we're hitting into hour two here. Yes, we are. So I think I, that. Um, oh, mm-hmm. you got something in mind? I, yeah, I actually I, I teased this earlier to to everybody. Uh, I I actually have a very special announcement that I have to make. Uh, we'll play that at the break. Um, <laughs> no, we're not gonna we're, we're gonna find out at the end of the show. But I'm uh, gonna take this opportunity to tell everyone at the halfway mark that there will be a special announcement regarding the future of the programming with uh, us involved. And you're definitely going to want to hear it. So stay tuned to the end of the show around the a uh, little bit before the 10 o'clock hour, and you'll hear what I it is. God, this is totally oh, man. Don't fuck yourself. It sounds like this is my last show, guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> Did you say if it's Tow Truck Pig? <laughs> yeah, I said if it's Tow Truck Pig, I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, if Tow Truck Pig did pop up, I think the the second time around, it would work. It'd kind of be like a, a Skip Sheffield <laughs> Ryback kind of thing. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Great mind single leg. We would have brought Ryback back, and we might bring Tow Truck back. 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 Uh, well, back. Speaking of Ryback, by the way, we did have that Ask Him question that was not answered yet. A little refresher. Gosh. What was the name of the tag team Ryback was in after he had been suspended for a wellness policy failure? And the tag team name is kind of funny to go with the wellness policy thing. That's why I thought that would be a good little ask him. Not too much of a Tony question. It's not like, um, you know, what's the percentage of wins for this one person or some bullshit like that. What's the percentage for this one guy that you have to guess he wrestled in five different companies between 1983 and 2004? I still think one of my favorite uh, Ask Hims was Who is Very Mysterious Ice Cream? <laughs> Anybody remember that from uh, oh, over a year ago? I don't eat, I don't eat Cheez-Its. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, back in the, back in the new day yesterday? I'll be doing <laughs> shoulder holder holder. <laughs> I like if you go to uh, Wikipedia and you uh, look through the you know description of the career of Ryback. They're <laughs> describing as uh, this return of Ryback called as the return of Feed Me More. <laughs> <laughs> the return of Feed Me More. Not Ryback. Like. Oh. <laughs> it's oh, like I'm when not, they not change not the names around. Like they drop the Langston and he's this big E and he's not Alexander Rusev or Antonio Cesaro. It's like now they just drop Ryback and they're like, you're just going to go out there as Feed Me More because it's already at the beginning of your song. <laughs> just the same way that, like, uh, you know, all the other uh, wrestlers that are out there that'll start off with, like, some kind of a thing like that. It'll just have your fucking your Goldberg chant in the background. It'll be Feed Me More, the new WWE champion. Six-time uh, WWE champion. Feed me more. I'm down for it. I still like the big hungry name, by the way. You guys miss that? No. <laughs> the I big like... guy's better. Yeah, like big, big guy's way better. I like big, the big guy, guy but... is better, Tony. Why can't no, he be the big hungry guy? <laughs> because the big because guy... Because Seth is Rollins is already the hungry cat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and they gotta save some food for hungry or grumpy cat when he's on the show next Monday. <laughs> Speaking of Grumpy Cat, Caroline, you still on the line with us? We're having some... Yes, I am. Wow, that's rude. I am. Yeah, you're a friend. No, 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 no. I, I'm not, like, I'm not like you guys. I'm not that knowledgeable in the whole history of WWE. So I was just learning a lot of stuff. Well, no, but... I was just referring to him calling you Grumpy Cat. No, I'm not calling her Grumpy oh. Cat. I'm just going to try to get... No, that's uh... okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's cute. What do you think of the Grumpy Cat situation? Is that something uh, that's going to make you want to watch Raw next week? Or is that just kind of like, what the hell's Grumpy Cat doing in here? I'm watching it. I don't care what you guys think. If it's stupid or not. I think it's adorable. I love Grumpy Cat. I'm with Caroline. Well, we're gonna watch there it you go, I'm I'm ad- one. I am an advocate for Grumpy Cat, and I've said this from the announcement, so I don't know what everyone's got their panties in a bunch about. I, I still I have no think idea it would be better. Grumpy Cat is, by the way. So. It's an American meme. In, in the dark. Yeah! He's I, like I, a little kitty that... She is a little kitty that looks grumpy all the time, and she's having a movie coming out, so I guess that's why she's going to come to Raw. I was at um, Michael's Crafts earlier to get the uh, frames and whatnot for my uh, Joker and Harley, 
And at the checkout aisle, they had all these stuffed animals, and they had, like, the TYBD babies, and they had all this other stuff. And they actually had stuffed grumpy cats. <laughs> I was actually going to pick one up. It's like, oh, I can watch Raw while I have my little stuffed grumpy cat with me. Aww. Uh, that's actually a really funny name. I think that grumpy cat is kind of like the um, the antithesis of that boo dog. That and they had one, one of those, too. like a bear. Yeah, I think it's like they're... They had stuffed boos right next to it. <laughs> Exactly. It's like they're kind of like a pair that uh, they're like the odd couple or something. Felix and Oscar, Boo and Grumpy Cat. So, so let me get this straight, right? Somebody made a movie about a cat that looks grumpy. Yeah. Dude, they made a TV yeah. show about the Geico caveman. They'll do anything. God damn. That's true. Yeah, and it's uh, right, voiced by Aubrey Plaza. Can I make a movie about that? What was that, Sean? Hmm? My dog what? is mentally challenged. Can I make a movie about that? You gotta give him like yeah. a, a yeah, catchy I'm name. Yeah. Put it on Kickstarter. I bet you can get people behind it. Well, to be fair, Grumpy Cat has dwarfism. That's why it looks so fucked up. Really? It really? It doesn't look fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like real cats called Tartasauce or something in real life. And <laughs> <laughs> Tartasauce. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can uh, mark the I, movie I wanna... Grumpy Cat by calling it Grumpy Cat, but it would have been hilarious if it would have been like, the new Grumpy Cat movie, Tartar Sauce. <laughs> <Just like laughs> I'm still going to back up what I said on Monday on the Raw Post Show, that I think it would be better if they got Keyboard Cat instead. <laughs> I still yeah. want to say uh, Yan Cat. <laughs> That's a new stable. It, they could fight the, the New Day stable. It could be Grumpy Cat, Keyboard Cat, and Yan Cat. And Seth Rollins. Yeah, well, Seth Rollins got to be like their mouthpiece or something. There's some kind of mouthpiece. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say there's some kind of a joke that's gonna come out of this, I'm sure, but the mouthpiece. They could bring the Pokemon fans into it. There you go. Uh, uh, uh. So let's start uh, running down some of the other topics that we have because we are in hour two and we eventually will run out of time here. But. Uh... Ra, 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 ra. <laughs> Yo, let's, let's knock that big one out of the way right now. Great Khali <laughs> has been released from WWE. What? He has been yes. moved to the alumni section and pretty much confirmed right now that he. it's not that he got fired for any particular reason like uh, the Del Rio uh, scenario, but he ran aye, out of aye, his aye. contract and he, you know, they just didn't uh, renew the contract and whatever. And that makes perfect sense to me because they weren't using him. So why waste money? I don't I don't even think it's fair to say he was released. I, I think what Great Khali did is retire. I think that's exactly how the situation went down. Yeah, uh, you know, I guess it depends on what he plans on doing after this because I can't imagine him wrestling anywhere else. He'll probably go to TNA. I'm imagining that he's going to take the buttload of money he's made through the years, uh, get work done to his knees so he could walk normal again, <laughs> and live out the rest of his days at home having fun. You think he might go back to the police force? Too. I imagine he'd live in India and like buy a dancing horse or some shit. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure with the money he's made in WWE, he could afford to live in the nicest place in India three times, three lifetimes over. So I'm sure he's doing good. He's rolling in rupees. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like you know borderline offense. <laughs> Uh, they also apparently moved Brad Maddox over to the alumni section, but there hasn't been any confirmation that he hasn't been uh, renewed for his contract or that he's been released or anything of the sort. But... He's, been, he's, been, he's been in that section since he got quote-unquote uh, fired. Yes, oh, he has? noticing now. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's really <laughs> sad yeah, for Brad Maddox. Him, they, they checked to see if the great Collie was released, and they noticed Brad Maddox is in there, and it's like, oh, he's been released too. <laughs> I liked Brad Maddox. I hope he comes back around in some way. Maybe as like a, a manager or something. He doesn't need to be a role general manager anymore. And if they're not going to have him be a wrestler, then he doesn't need to wrestle, obviously. But yeah, maybe he could but try. How his... did he get that job in WWE? Maybe he knows somebody. How did he debut? Somebody hmm? Like, he how did he a... actually come in? He was, he was a referee rat. that screwed Ryback. That's right. No, I'm mean, right, I... right, right. No, I mean, like, how did he get in? Within the company as a whole. Well, they've got uh, this developmental program where wrestlers come up and then they eventually get, get a job with WWE. They've got someone like that called NXT now. You might have heard of it. Or he might have been Eric Bischoff's nephew. 
I know why Tony likes him. He uses no, way too much no, hair no, products. no, no, no. That's uh, Eugene. <laughs> That's Eric Bischoff's nephew. Well, there's also reports that there are going to be some other releases coming soon and uh, that we should be looking out for anybody who gets fired. So just a general speculation. Who do you guys think might be on the chopping block? Cause I'm Zach start- Ryder. Yeah, I'm starting to see Zack Ryder's name as like the top of the list. And another I think, person... I wouldn't be surprised. Swagger. I don't think I Swagger's, think Swagger's going to be around for a little bit. Then why, did, then why, did, they, then why did they put him on the team just so they could injure him? I think because they're like their roster's so thin right now, they needed somebody to just be a sacrificial lamb. Yeah, it made it made the authority look stronger doing that. Yeah. Plus, they didn't just have him lose to somebody on Team Authority to you know make them look like they're badasses or whatever. They had him announced as a member of the team, and then he got taken out of it. That's usually more than what they give other people. Um, I could see Justin Gabriel going. I don't think he's what really got. Wrestled on the next yesterday. Yeah, but they filmed those in advance, and if he doesn't wrestle over the next uh, little while, then I think that he might be yeah. going to. You'll you'll see people wrestling on NXT after the release sometimes, actually. So that's that, that's, that's not true. a sign of anything. Yeah, um, you know that who happened actually... with Cassius Ono, didn't it? It, it did, yes. Um, if you're if I'm worried about anybody from NXT, I'm actually really worried for that uh, that hyped guy. What the fuck was his name? Mojo okay. Rawley. I am Mojo for him, hoping he gets fucking. Yeah, released. like he was like a big deal for a while, and then he just got squashed by fucking Bull Dempsey, and now he's like nowhere. <laughs> you sure he didn't just fail some wellness policies because he stays high all the time? <laughs> um, I would expect him to go because he was he was just shit. I can't believe yeah. they put as much faith in him as they did. I could see Marcus Louis going. Was well, he the one who uh, lost his hair, or the one that didn't lose his hair? The one who got shaved bald. Or, er, well, no, he got the whatever tonic took away his hair or whatever. Can yeah, removal crew. Um, I, I can honestly see Layla going. I could see Layla going, too, yeah. Layla's getting I, up I there in age, that. and mm-hmm. she uh, she Not won't be wrestling with her. Yeah. She's already won the championship. She's already been a, a heel and a baby face a bunch of different times, so... Unless they plan on putting her on Total Divas, which I... I don't think regret they hadn't by this point. They must be, yeah, they gotta be giving her they, they want the young girls on there. Maybe she's got uh, a boring life. I imagine she does. Like what do you, mean? you know, she maybe she's just, just not like herself. sleeping around, not getting into arguments with people and stuff, and they're like, Well, there's no point in having you on here. Like you're just Layla, you're like this uh sweet woman and that's it. I, I totally picture Layla being the kind of girl who just goes back to her apartment, puts on sweatpants, and eats ice cream and watches Netflix. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to me. Which not I'd... that I have anything wrong with that. It's totally the kind of girl I would right. hang out with. But exactly. I was just going to say that. Total Divas. Uh, a couple of people that probably aren't on the chopping block because they just had a stable announced, but you never know. That's not a complete indicator that they're safe. Um, Angelo Dawkins, uh, Sawyer Fulton, and Chad Gable. Actually, yeah, goodbye. Never, never heard of Chad Gable before, but they are calling themselves Shoot Nation. Hate that name. Uh, I could see maybe like Jason Jordan going. Maybe but he's CJ. A mechanic. Maybe CJ Parker. He's kind of just fell in like a, a random jobber spot well, right but what, what about main roster guys though is there any other one of them like that we should really be on the lookout like uh ferris 419 says he's slater i'm actually gonna really hope he doesn't because this slater gator thing has a lot of potential that they haven't run yet well, what about Titus O'Neil? do you think he could possibly be on Who? there as well uh, Who? titus titus o'neill another guy like he's he's a really great talker and i think they haven't used up his potential he's later i also think is a guy who's going to stick around for a while just as one of those like steady hands you know like a guy who's safe like remember when they were doing those whole things with the legends where they had the old guys coming out every week and they fought Heath Slater because they knew Heath right. Slater was a guy they could put in the ring and not hurt them i tell you who i'm what worried about, about? Riley. Eh, i'm not worried yeah. about riley i think riley's got his uh his announcing spot kind of carve it yeah, in there he, he got the Josh Matthews job. He he did okay. Two people <laughs> that I would be worried about though, uh, Curtis Axel, and Curtis Waxel. definitely Fandango. I'm very worried for Fandango, and it's a shame because I think he has a lot of gas in the tank too. But mm-hmm. they, uh, they... I have I have more faith in Johnny Curtis instead of and, Fandango. And, and you know what's really shame that like they spent all that time with Fandango and Summer Rae and that stupid storyline they finished them off with. And now neither of them are anywhere to be seen. 
No. It was all for naught. And it's not like Fandango's injured or that he's off shooting a movie or whatever. They just don't have him wrestling. And it's a shame, too, because it's not like they don't have enough time for him on these shows, too. They've got these same people writing, uh, not writing, same people wrestling on main event and superstars each week. Rusev squashed Sin Cara, I think, like three times in a row or something. Why can't Fandango wrestle Tyson Kidd? Or why can't uh, Heath Slater go up against... Uh, Justin Gabriel, or you know, like there, there's ways to incorporate these guys. Or fuck, if Fandango yeah. is not going to be used on Superstars or Main Event or Raw or SmackDown, send him to fucking NXT and have a feud with him and somebody like a Tyler Breeze or whatever. Turn him babyface, Yo, it, you know. It and Tyson Kidd, there's like a prime example of a way to like save your fucking job. Yeah. Because <laughs> like a year ago, I would have nominated him as one of the first people to go. But now I don't think there's any possible way you could even think of him someone who could be going. Now Tyson Kidd's in a really good spot. Well, not like a you know good spot like John Cena good spot, but Tyson Kidd's working his way into not like a, a backstage trainer kind of thing, but if he's working NXT guys and he's really reliable and it looks like it's paying off because now he's showing up on Raw to just have random matches and stuff. If they are that confident in his skills and having him be like one of those reliable hands, he could be somebody who's around for a really long time and eventually give him one of those backstage kind of jobs. He's going to be like a Finley. He could be like the next uh, Billy Kidman type of guy. Mm. I could see that happening. Mm. I can't see that happening for Fandango, though. I, I got a feeling Fandango's going soon. And I really hope that's mm. not the you... case because I like Fandango. What about Adam Rios? Or do you think it's too soon to give up on it? You know, him? I really hope Adam Rose goes, actually. What if, like, mm, Bo Dallas? No, Bo Dallas needs to stay around. Okay. No, I'm just saying, do you think... What about Christian? Bo Dallas was, like, the NXT champion for almost a year. <clears throat> yeah, but so was Big E, and... Big E is about to get repackaged with a big new gimmick. What's your point? Yeah, big new package. That's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about David Otonga? What no, the fuck he's got so dead family even still. Doing anyway. Wait, he still has dead family? Yeah, the oh. family is still dead. So <laughs> yeah, they're not coming back. <laughs> he's what about, uh, what about Los Santos? <laughs> <laughs> What's Let's... he do for a living? Oh, yeah, I have dead family. <laughs> uh, still? You're still at the job? <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's really worrying about that zombie apocalypse because it's going to really put him out of a job. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, all right some other hot tags that have gone on for the past few days um cm punk has written uh thor annual number one a marvel comics issue and it seems like that's going to be one of the next stages in his career is he's going to take that kind of um geeky passion side of things and he's going to start working with marvel so for the fanboys anonymous and smart out movement people that go to both websites there's something to pay attention to. CM Punk working with Marvel now. Thor and number one. Let's give shout outs to uh, our very own Chris Dace, who reported on that. I don't know if it was on Fanboys or on SmartCal. He wrote an article <laughs> on one of those sites. It was on Fanboys. But it could have been on uh, SmartCal Moment. You know, it's yeah, crossover. Just copy and paste it. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the. Pro Wrestling Illustrated Top 50 Women's Wrestlers of 2014. They call it their uh, Female 50. And Paige was number one on there. AJ Lee was number Woo-hoo. two. And I think number three was um, Gail Kim or True Leader Melissa or somebody like that. Um, not many WWE people were in the top ten, naturally. Yeah, lots of shimmer. Yeah, uh, I think Natalia and Charlotte were the only two other WWE people in top ten. Because they had Eva I Lee's. That. I think Charlotte's oh, it's four four of them. pretty good. So that's four of them. And especially with TNA having their own division that usually does better than WWE's. I'm not too... I'm actually kind of surprised. Do you have four people in the top ten? Uh, very deserved by Paige, I would say. She's, she's done a great job this year getting over as a star. And now she can no, hang in there with up. anyone. She's not a bird. No one cares. I care. A lot of people care. What are you talking about? I still think you Charlotte's You just said she just caught over. No, she is. By far, no. Just, no. Do you want to fucking elaborate on that thought, Drew? Because you sound <laughs> retarded. No, just, no. I'd rather not. 
from the Dude, female like women that are taller than him. <laughs> From the female Wait, perspective, like Caroline, what do you think of women's wrestling? Is it something that draws you in being a female, or do you think that it sucks the way that most people tend to? Uh, well, I mean, I only know as much as WWE goes. So on that end, yeah, I mean, I watch it. I like seeing her. Like, I like Naomi a, a lot because she does, like, those crazy tricks in the air. I think that's cool. But I, it, it's not as funny to me as the guys wrestling I feel like they tend to put them in just very like stereotypical roles that I don't know it's kind of just like not funny we have like the crazy girls that will stab their friends in the back and just go whatever they they have to do to get the title you have like the sexy girls and the athletic girls I mean it's just very two dimensional. Like yeah, you either you either have the bratty girl or you have the cheerleader. Come on, kind of. I hate that so yeah, much. Uh, wait, what one are you talking about there? Yeah. What? Oh. I don't know. The, the the women are not allowed to flourish as they once were. I mean, if you look at the women of the late '90s, they had very specific personalities: the Ivories, the Trish Stratuses, the Litas. The Jacklins, even uh, now, like all these women are just kind of the same. Like they got this whole total divas cast. It's like half a dozen women. I, I honestly couldn't tell them apart. Like if if I didn't actually like know yeah. their looks so specifically, like their their personalities are all the same. That's true, and that's a shame because I feel like they could really build it off. And maybe I mean I feel like for what I've seen, okay, I don't know, like in the years before this, which is when I really got into watching WWE, but I feel like lately the last um, storyline they had where the women interact with the guys was the Fandango one, and then it's kind of just like two separate universes, and I don't really get why. Like, I feel like they should be used more in a way that it's not just like, oh, we can we can be with the male wrestlers as long as we're like the prop, the cute prop next to them. <laughs> Uh, sexism has a long history in uh, wrestling. It actually wasn't until the late 90s where women were even looked at as a serious competitor. Oh, wow. Um, and all you can go back to the 20s and find when women were just arm candy. Um, and it was even worse back then. It, but then it wasn't until, like, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I want to say it was, like, 98 that women were really allowed to be taken seriously. You know who really like, turned before, the tide like, with that? Mula, because nobody could look at her as ar- uh, arm candy. Well, no, here's the thing. <laughs> Mula dominated the women's industry for like 30 plus years. Right. And she essentially turned it into like a slave trade industry. Like she completely tainted and ruined that industry for decades. Um, it, it's actually a really crazy story to go into. There's a documentary on Netflix I recommend everyone who's a wrestling fan check out, especially women's wrestling. Uh, if you can be a fan of that. Uh, it's called Lipstick and Dynamite, and it's all about the golden age of women's wrestling going through, like, the 50s all the way to the 80s. And, you know, a lot of that was when Moolah was on top, and it was... Uh, it's, they actually had these really funny interviews of uh, the house that Moolah and uh, Mae Young lived in, and they have, like, a pet midget. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> they, have a, they have a pet midget. I'm not even, like, making this up. They have a midget that just, like, lives in the house with them, and they just take care of it. And they didn't elaborate on it any further than that. It's just, like, they're this old lesbian couple, and they have a pet midget. That's, wow. (laughs) Awesome. That (laughs) sounds like a storyline. One of my favorite parts of the whole thing, though, is when um, they were, like, highlighting a lot of the other women's wrestling. Like I said, Mula was basically, like, a slave driver, and she's the only woman who made any money through that period. And there was this one other woman, who, I, I can't remember what her name was, it wasn't Mildred Burke, but it was um, some other, Judy Grable, maybe it was, um, and she was, like, really old, and she was sick, and, you know, and she wasn't doing very good, and, like, Mula's visiting her, and she's like, oh, you know, don't feel bad that you don't have money, you know, they can't take it with you anyway, and then uh, Mula speaks up again, she's like, oh, wait a minute, actually, I was just talking to this guy, and they can line your casket with cash, so I can take it with me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Just, well, never mind. My life's going to be great even when I die. Um, so Mula really had a stronghold on it. And even when she came in with Vince McMahon into the WWF, she, she was 
she kind of had to play like to Vince's game, but she still had control of it. And Vince knew that he had to like kind of follow her lead too. Like it was like a very mutual respect between those two. And you are right in some ways that did help Vince warm up to women's wrestling. And that was when he started bringing on more women in the late eighties and eventually bringing in like Sherry and uh, later on Alundra blaze. And finally in the late nineties when a lot of women probably popped up and that's when we got the Trish Stratuses and all that. It's really a weird story, women's wrestling. And now to see where it is now, where it's just a bathroom break, it's really sad. Right. Yeah, I agree. So we have a couple of mailbag questions that have been sent in that we need to make sure we get to. We've got just a tad over a half an hour left on this episode, so we've got to run through them. And we've got uh, the Ask Him if anybody wants to call in and try to guess on that as well. And we've got some Fantasy League that we can run down and the the, uh, announcement that's going to be coming at the end of the show. So our questions were sent in from Adam Jackpot. XX Deadwing 666XX on uh, Twitter. So thank you for sending those in, Adam. Uh, he has three questions here. Number one, out of the big five from NXT, Kevin Steen, uh, Sami Zayn, Adrian Neville, Kenta, and Prince Devitt, who gets the WWE Championship first and who's the first to be released? Anybody want to throw in your uh, suggestions on there? Tag yourself in. Well, Kevin Steen. I think Kevin Steen takes the WWE Championship. Um, I think he's very driven, and I think he's the most talented in-ring competitor out of everyone in there. Sami Zayn, I think he's going to have a long struggle, and he'll get there eventually, but it's it's going to be the Daniel Bryan situation all over again. Um, the one I'd worry about the most is actually Kenta. If um, apparently there's issues with him connecting to the WWE style, and if that's the case, it could be Sin Cara all over again. Um, if I was going to release anyone and I had to, as much as I like him, probably Adrian Neville. Mm-hmm. He's like, he can do a really cool flip or two, but... Totally smart he, monkey. Yeah, that's what he is. And until he can develop a character, um, he's in the most danger. He's so going to sh- become another RVD very fast. Except who did, I, who did I miss out? Still works. Uh, did I miss out Finn Balor oh, Finn. and... Um... I think that's it. Okay, as far as he... You know what? I haven't, I've seen a couple matches, but I haven't seen enough of him to make a fair judgment, so I'm going to give him a chance. Mm-hmm. Anybody else want to tag in? Give your suggestions? I'm I'll really good. Go ahead, Sean. I don't know who any of these people are, apart from Sami Zayn and um, Adrian Neville, because I don't have the WWE Network yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You do have so, the internet. So I out. So you, but you do have the internet. I do have the internet, but I want my and, network first. Yeah, except Mango doesn't use the network. I sure use the I network. Can't. I still don't use my network. I use Daces. Thank there you, Dace. You <laughs> 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 All, All right, right well, I'll, <laughs> I really have essentially the same thing Wago said, though. I, I think Steen is very likely to be the first person to make it to that main event level. I would see Sami Zayn being a person who gets there. I, I would see him more being a solid upper mid-card kind of guy, like a guy who could really help bring prestige back to an intercontinental division. He's a guy you can center that around, uh, a guy who's going to go out there and have match of the night consistently. Uh, Adrian Neville, without a doubt to me, is going to be the first guy released out of this pack. Even if Kenta has trouble, I think that they're going to be willing to put more behind him to try to keep it going, as opposed to Adrian Neville, which I think he's going to get lost once he comes to the main, uh, main roster and just disappear. Uh, as far as Finn Balor, uh, he, I could really go either way with him. You know, I, I could see him being a guy like a Ken Shamrock who can come in with tons of potential and all the tools to make it and might just be, there just might be too many other up-and-comers around him and he's not able to find a spot. So that that's where I would see all that going. I'll go next now. Go for it. Steve's going to be the first one to uh, release because he's fat. Um <laughs> And also because he's the most overrated out of all these guys. Um, okay, uh, tell me all the Steam matches you've seen, Drew. Uh, I've seen enough Steam matches that I don't... You've really never watched be... one fucking match, have you? No, I he's have. Fat! I'm not going to do each one, just you, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, what, what match did you watch? Um, let me go through this list, and I will tell you then. Holy <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> He does need if, a new name. I'm gonna say that. If they did they announce what his name's gonna be yet? Kevin no, Owens. He's, no, he's gonna get a new name because he's gonna it's be Kevin. It's Kevin Owens. He's named him. Um, he took it after Owen Hart. Apparently, it's, it's way better because 
Just steam sounds gross. Steam sounds grody. Kevin the Steam Boat. That should be his name. Anyways, um, out of these four, I actually do not know. I actually Five. think Evil, if RVD still has a job and you guys are say, can like compare him to RVD, then I think Neville will be just fine and he'll have a job. So, I think he'll be fine. I think Kenta will have issues. Uh, what, Finn Balor, he needs a new name. I don't like that at all. I can't connect with that. Especially <laughs> since they have like a little hyphen over the yay to make it, uh, like, different. It's not hyphen, it's an accent. Accent, my bad. I don't know why I said hyphen, it's my fault. I have an but accent. Out of all these, I can really only see... <laughs> I can see Zane, Neville... I think Sting could win the uh, Intercontinental title, but I do not Sting. see him being... This, Steam. I can see him winning an international not a heavy WWE championship, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Caroline, are you familiar with the NXT guys? No, I'm not. So I would just say Grumpy Cat, <laughs> and agree everything you guys just said. I uh, I am gonna agree with Carolyn. Can we get rid- <laughs> can we get rid of Drew Keeper? Yeah, he has way better mm-hmm. opinions. We got a caller on the line right now from the 419 area code. 419, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Ferris. What's up, guys? Hey, Ferris. What's up, man? Oh, we should have known that. (laughs) You should have, yeah. Uh, You guys were talking about Grumpy Cat, and I just had a thought. After tomorrow night, Grumpy Cat will have been on Raw more than the champ in the last two months. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Wait, wait. are Are you saying you want to see Grumpy Cat as the champion? <laughs> I'm not counting it out. I, would uh, totally no, I just kind of wanted to call in and, and complain about uh, how they're booking Brock Lesnar, or rather not God, booking. Everyone him. just wants to call in and complain. Doesn't anyone want to call in and say something <laughs> nice? Um, no, please go ahead, JD. Well, I, I know you guys have discussed it a lot. You know, and I, I listened to the whole thing where you kind of did the fantasy booking for for his reign and who would eventually take it and stuff like that. Uh, and I understand the reality behind the situation that his appearances cost a lot. But he needs to defend the damn title. Nope. I mean, he, he wasn't on the. He's not going to be on this pay per view. Uh, we haven't seen him on the last one. Uh, they're saying he's not going to defend it until sometime next year. Um, Ferris, I think it's boring if he doesn't defend Ferris, it. I think it cheapens the title. How many times did Hulk Hogan defend the title between 1984 and 1988? Except here's the thing. Oh, do not give this argument. They didn't have a cha- uh, pay per view every month. In 1984, right? It's still at TV. They, yeah, yeah but the TV. Last time you've seen it, it on it's TV. Not TV. They had Saturday Night's main event. Here's my biggest argument: If you, you've got the same, you'd have all the same talent if Brock Lesnar wasn't in the company, except there isn't a shiny belt there. So it really fucking makes no sense to me that everyone's taking an issue with it. Yeah, but here's knew, the thing: there's going to be only there. four matches on Survivor the Series. Titles are fucking the issue. Prop. Yeah, except it's a prop that let. People watch the show and it adds a match to the fucking card. There's only like, good, like six matches or even five on this next card because you can't make anything happen. Okay, and having one extra guy on the roster isn't going to change that. Then you've got no, one extra match. No, having one extra guy with the WWE Championship will change that because it adds an extra match. No, but see, I just Drew, said it adds this, an extra match. Guys, guys, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, this isn't a problem of Brock Lesnar but not being there. This is a problem of poor booking in general. Right, they they could build a fantastic card without the champion there. Um, I, I can think of a perfect example is um, in your house buried alive. It was during the summer of Shawn Michaels when Shawn Michaels was the hottest thing in wrestling, uh, but Shawn Michaels did not wrestle in that pay per view because the main event was Undertaker versus Mankind in that buried alive match. Um, they had a good undercard too because that's what they were doing at the time. They had a really good undercard in WWF. And they booked things so well, they didn't need Shawn Michaels to fight. And he was healthy. He totally could have wrestled in that pay-per-view, but he just didn't because it was booked well enough where they didn't need him. So why so can't they do think... that now? I don't know. That's that's their own damn fault. They should be able to do it. So I'd be is... totally fine if he wasn't on every pay-per-view defending it. He doesn't even have to be on TV. He doesn't have to be on Raw. He doesn't have to be on the pay-per-view. I think they could just announce and be like, Oh, by the way, Brock defended the title this weekend at some small town house show over the weekend. He says you guys don't deserve to see him on TV. You know, just this, if he were defended, you know, I know it costs money to book him. But have him show up, uh, you know, we all like to do fantasy booking, but I'd like to see like a series of, of 
cheap defenses. You know, let him just come and take his own opponent. On let him out. face a local jobber or something. <laughs> yeah, or have somebody <laughs> random come cool, to the ring. You know, have, have your Zack Ryders and your Kofi Kingstons come to the ring. Or, or you could even take it to the next level heat and be somebody like Emma or Renee Young or Zeb Coulter. You know, have him come out, do a 20-second squash match, and then he's like, we'll see you in 30 days. What you're saying is we need to bring Zach Gowan back and let Brock <laughs> beat him in front of his mother again. I think no, they, should yeah. Brock Lesner, fake leg. Yeah. they should have had Brock Lesnar come out when they had that uh, veteran guy out with the bionic uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that, that was really nice. Nice. This is a title match. Yeah. All right, well, I think what we need to do is we need to combine the efforts. We need Paul Heyman to be mad at Grumpy Cat for stealing his uh, shtick, <laughs> and then Brock Lesnar can come and F5 Grumpy Cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Animal violence. I was actually gonna go with Brock Kamoring, uh, fucking Make a Wish kid, but that works too. <laughs> All right. Why, don't we, why doesn't he do both to get a lot of heel heat? If we can find a grumpy cat that's been in the military and is in the Make a Wish uh, foundation, then that's gonna be the best opponent for Brock Lesnar. See, my problem isn't as much Brock Lesnar is not showing up or that the champion isn't showing up. It's that Brock Lesnar as the champion isn't being booked over the course of the next couple of months. If, if you, if he's not going to show up, he isn't being booked. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, smart do they enough. have a long-term goal or plan for this at all? Or are they just making it up as they go along? I, if I, Cole's I, whoever I, beats Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania is made for life. But see, that's my problem with it because they're not made for life. If he's only beaten John Cena twice. And yeah, the only I, times I, that he's I beaten think, John Cena are good. the ones where he like one time already he basically lost the match and he retained through the skin of his teeth. So it's not like you're beating somebody who has been on, on an undefeated massive streak for the past couple of months as a champion. Nobody could touch him. He's had a bunch of different title reigns, uh, or not title reigns, a bunch of different title matches where nobody stood a chance. And now somebody's going to actually win the Royal Rumble and do it. It's remember that guy that's the champion that hasn't been around in a while. Well, this is the guy that's going to beat him. That's the thing that bothers me. To be fair, me. he is one in 21, mm, though, isn't I'm, he? I'm, I'm going to be pretty frank with you guys. This sucks now, but in 2016, you're not going to remember that Brock Lesnar wasn't around. You're going to remember that guy who beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31 after Brock Lesnar destroyed John Cena and also ended the undefeated streak of The Undertaker at WrestleMania. That's what you're going to remember. So in the long term, this is going to look really good for somebody. See, that you know, is kind of sucks for the I think Lesnar has now. to keep it after WrestleMania. I think he has to defend it at WrestleMania and keep it beyond that because cause kind of like what Tony was saying, if he drops it at WrestleMania, it's not, it hasn't been built up enough because he's only defended against Cena twice, maybe once more. And like it, it needs to get built up more. You know, like, like you know, said, if, he needs to watch a bunch of other people. If, if they want to keep it on him for like a whole nother year to the next WrestleMania, I would be okay with You've that. You've mentioned that before. Yeah. I have mentioned that before. I, I think yeah, that would be I'd a great idea to do that. As long as he defends it more than just against Cena and I, more than every three months. If Daniel Bryan or Roman Reigns are not ready for the Rumble, I'm perfectly okay with them doing that with Brock. Yeah, I guess we're all in agreement on this. Yeah. <laughs> Court is I, was, I was trying to think <laughs> of a, an alternative to it, and the only other person I could think of was yeah. Dean Ambrose, and he's not ready for it. So... Yeah, no, I, mean... I don't think Ambrose is. But an, an, another idea I had, and I don't know if any of you guys said this when you were doing your fantasy booking, but, you know, Triple H says, you know, this is out of control. He's not defending his title. You know, you guys can't get the job done. I have to do it. So he books himself against Oh, uh, no, I don't want to see that fucking uh, match again. I, 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 love <laughs> Triple H. I love Triple H in the role he's in now. He he could stay out of the ring. We yeah. just have Wade Barrett as champion. I don't think everyone else is happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with you there, man. So that way he could wear the title and he could do that stupid walk that we were doing at New York Comic Con and just be like, right, 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 I'm the champion, right? <laughs> I'd be up for that. Would anyone just want to see him back on air? He doesn't have to be the champ. just want to see him back. And Wade Barrett's just going to be like secretly thinking his head, gosh, I am so glad that I laughed at Triple H's impression of me. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H is like, we've got this great guy. Uh, it's better than ever in WWE right now. I mean, just listen to how he says, Roy, 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 Roy. Yeah, look, I could do a good impression too, guys. <laughs> He's like, as long as I and can still do this impression, why make people laugh. Wade Barrett now? Like, uh, I know he's out injured, but they could have him doing the promos, you know, have that platform, the, the rising podium come out again, you know, in like the weeks or months up to when he's coming back. Oh, hey, you know, that have, would just be an efficient use of three hours. 
That would just be nuts. <laughs> Yeah, they got to use that time to do another SmackDown rebound, or uh, let's look at what happened earlier on from the earlier recap from earlier on. Yeah, exactly. Raw. We need, we That's need, a good point. No, we need seven replays of the opening segment, I guess. Didn't he say, like, start the bad news, uh, Barrett Gimmick, because he was injured? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's no reason he couldn't be doing it again right now. Dude, it's ridiculous. I've I've been watching old Raws in the WWE Network from 1993 and 1994. They're an hour long, and I feel like so much more happens in this yeah. hour than I do when I watch these three hour shows now. Not only does so much more happen, but you'll end up getting like usually like one pretty quality match on a lot of those mm-hmm. episodes, whether it's the main event or it's like some you know tag match in the middle of nowhere or like an intercontinental title match or something but usually there would end up being like That's, one pretty solid match but it maybe but there would be a lot of shitty matches too and i mean yeah. like really shitty squash matches like far yeah, worse definitely. than anything we would get on now i mean you would have fucking the sultan mantar mantar versus some local jobber like i can't remember the last time we had a local jobber match i think it was when ryback was doing the uh two verse one gimmick i liked that by the way that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. There was like Glenn Williams and <laughs> shit, and like Steven Stevens. <laughs> that was the best. Two is better than one. I fucking loved that. That was awesome. I want them to do that again, like just for like one week. Have him do a gauntlet match with like a bunch of no name jackasses, and he just every beats single him. jobber that he's ever beat, he has to refight in one night. Yeah, and he just clotheslines all of them one after another. Feed me more, and then like another dominoes. one comes out. Next victim. <laughs> He's dead, Jim. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Ferris, you want to take a guess at the ask him? Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> uh, what was the tag team that Ryback was a part of after he had gotten uh, suspended for a wellness policy violation? Oh, shit. I don't remember. I have no idea. See, I wouldn't have known and this That might have been during the time either. when I stopped watching it for a while. I kind of go back and forth over the years. I've been totally into it in the last year and a half, but I don't know. Over the years, I just step away for a while when it kind of bores me. But Okay, Ferris, I've got a question for you. Should yeah. Drew give up his team to Tony? <laughs> Should Drew give up his team to Tony? Well, you guys were talking about that bet before or whatever, uh, and I think, I think what you should be able to do is you should be able to rename – uh, the Drew Crew. You should be able to rename them. You know, give them whatever. Whoever wins gets to name them something. Ooh. So at least you know, because because who, who, which one of you guys is always renaming their their roster? That's Sean. Sean. Sean, 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 Sean. So, so what you should do is, yeah, you should be able. To, somebody should win the right to name uh, Drew's team whatever you want. I think that should be it. <laughs> well, if I, like I got if I got saddled with Tony's tykes, then I think Drew needs to be Drew's dykes. Why the fuck does no one else get? <laughs> Way to start with something, or Sean, or fucking Miguel. Why not? My, team, my team name's already fucking. Whoa, stupid. whoa! Why is it gotta be fucking Miguel? <laughs> <laughs> it's because you. Aye. It's because you keep fighting back, Drew. <laughs> because we get, we get a rise out of it in this situation. <laughs> if we were like, yo, Sean, we're gonna trade your team, we'd be like, all right, trade everybody on the team. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, I don't give a shit. I gotta stop Karen. When Seth Rollins was taking it away from me. Sean, so yeah, didn't you want to didn't you yeah, want to change Drew. your uh, team name to the Drew Crew? But yeah, Drew, that's why everyone makes fun of you because you freaking picked on poor Sean and took Seth Rollins away from him. My bad. Sean, I was Sean, that... pick on Sean. <laughs> My bad. I didn't know if he was that soft or soft. 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 Well, we oh, have. Yeah, two... you don't get that, Sean, because you don't have the fucking network. <laughs> We have two other questions from Adam Jackpot, but we also have the Fantasy League stuff. Uh, why don't we knock out the Fantasy League stuff before we backtrack for the mailbag uh, situation? Because I'm kind of assuming that not many things are going to be really traded, but uh, do you have the uh, next person in the waiver wire set up, Peyton? Uh, no, nope. hold on. <laughs> well, in the meantime... <laughs> Oh, man, I have to do this on the live show? <laughs> in the meantime, let's knock out one of the other questions, though. Uh, this is a pretty simple one. Uh, Adam asked, do we either participate or know of any good call situations that create a wrestler mode stuff? I don't really follow that kind of um, community, so not my bag. Anybody I mean, like... I created players once in, like, 2005. 
I created a character called Cocknose and trolled people on Xbox <laughs> Live. <laughs> I had this Cocknose. He was awesome. What was his finisher? Um, it was six low blows in a row followed by a close <laughs> line. That's great. <laughs> Uh, we do have one other question, though, and this is uh, one that we could spend a lot of time on, and maybe we'll do it for a future group meeting on Fanboys Anonymous to kind of tie the two in together. It's something we can't break down 100%, but if anybody wants to leave their comments on the uh, the mailbag question, or not the question, the, the post that's on smartcatmoment.com, if you have a full breakdown of the, the list, that'd be awesome. But the question is... Uh, Comparing people in WWE right now to the Avengers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I had said, like, uh, you know, you can take somebody like a Vince McMahon and compare him to Nick Fury. You could take the Hulk and Mark Henry, uh, maybe like John Cena and Captain America, and so on and so forth like that. But does any of those kind of things stand out to you guys, like some comparisons for you Avengers fans? Hmm. Mm-hmm. I would see the Hurricane being Green Lantern. I don't know if anyone else sees that. <laughs> Wrong company, <Stretch>. but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that shows how much I know. <laughs> I'm back. Back again. The way it goes back. Smoke the rest of that song. Anybody else? Uh, any Avengers come to mind about, like, say, I don't know... Black Panther or Vision or Quicksilver, any Kofi. of the new guys. Kofi would be Black Panther because he's black. Well, <laughs> Captain America is obvious. John Cena. I'd have to say Chris Jericho is. Tur- All right, you're gonna just read the whole thing. I'm gonna meet you. <laughs> <laughs> has there been like a single mail that you haven't for. gone to my thing and read part of it? <laughs> what about you, Caroline? Any Avengers WWE crossover people? Mine. I was like, oh, John Cena is definitely a Captain America. Just the obvious ones. Let me think a little bit. Like, ask other stuff. If I come up with something, I'll hold you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's somebody out there that's going to be eventually listening to this, and they're going to be like, trying to compare Rusev to, uh, I don't know, Scarlet Witch or something. Or oh David. man, wait. I need to figure out Rusev. Rusev is special. Rusev is definitely an Incredible Hulk. Rusev is a fucking potato. <laughs> he kind of looks like a potato. <laughs> yeah, we know. A pierogi. <laughs> Rusev pierogi. Rusev Oh, if uh, anybody wants to leave their comments on what they thought the uh, Avengers crossover stuff is, or the answers to any of those mailbag questions, smartoutmoment.com, you can leave a comment below on that. Um, uh, Peyton, you got the Fantasy League stuff up? Yeah, good enough. <laughs> That'll work. Okay. So who is the next in the waiver wire? Uh, next is... Uh, oh, boy. Uh, it's going to be Sean Walker. <laughs> oh, you yeah, oh. okay. right, I, I, I got a few trades. Well, you only get to do one now. So yep. what's your first one? I will drop Eric Rowan for Sheamus, please. No, oh, you motherfucker. I wanted Seamus. All right. That's taken care of. Wago, you actually have next. I don't even remember who's on my team, so I'm just going to pass. Cena, Orton, right. Lesnar, AJ, and Goldust. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. I like that team. All right. Uh, that would go to Miguel, who's not here, uh, which would actually bring it to me. Uh, I hate that I have to do this, but he had to go and get himself injured, not to mention he was on the downward spiral anyway. I am going to drop Bo Dallas, and uh, taking his place, I am going to take a chance with the New Day, and I'm going to bring on Kofi Kingston. Oh, is this where we, like, re-pick and pull the black guys again? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) they've been going in and out. We did this once already, shoot. Uh, Drew, you're next, so, I mean, there's one black guy left if you want. <laughs> oh, shoot, black guys. <laughs> you're just going to pick our truth and be like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> He's not in the new day. Wait, 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 hold on. So, wait, you wait, you took uh, Kofi, correct? I did take Kofi, yes. Is Biggie currently on the team? 
Biggie yeah, is uh, currently open for drafting. I will drop the bunny and pick up Biggie. All right. Big E going on the team for Drew. Taking the place of the bunny. Tony, we come to you. Right now, I've got Xavier Woods, so I've got my representative of the new day. I think Nikki Bella is going to win that championship. Mark Henry might get a push. Miz is still doing interesting stuff. And Dean Ambrose is... Uh, who would you trade the Miz for? Oh, you got... I don't even know who's on my team anymore. No, I don't know what anybody on your team. Never mind. You got Jack Swagger, Sheamus, Damian Sandow, Bad News Barrett, and Bray Wyatt. Nah. All right, cool. Ace. Awesome. <laughs> I'm keeping my team the same right now. There we go. We did a fair trade off. You got Sheamus out of everything. Could be you. Wait. So. Mm-hmm. Word. So, uh, it would go back to Sean if Sean wants to do something else. Awesome. I'll drop Swagger and pick up Tyson Kidd. I was just about to pick up Tyson. I forgot about him. <laughs> So I'm done. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that would bring it back to me, and I don't really have anyone else I'm interested in. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. That goes to uh, Wago, and Wago passed. So uh, then it goes back to uh, Tony if there's anything you decide you want to do now. Nope. No, I'm good. All right. Uh, bring, now it brings it to me, and I don't have anything I want to do. So, Drew, anything for you? Nope, I'm good. All right, Sean, anything else? <laughs> Tony, I'll trade you Bray Wyatt for the Miz. Nope. Oh, well, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'll give you a big E for Bray Wyatt. Steven, I will give you Bray Wyatt for Randy Orton. We've done this trade twice. <laughs> yeah, give it third time to challenge it. I'm trying to think, because Orton may be injured, but he may be coming on the Survivor Series team. And Bray's probably going to beat Dean Ambrose. Back. I'll just wait a week and make a choice. Hmm. Hang on. Let me flip my bell. Uh, now nah, I'm just keeping my team. <laughs> Let me flip my bell. Right. <laughs> Sean, is there any other trades you want to do? Mm, I'm I'm pretty good. All right. Is there anything anybody else wants to do, or can we just move on? Yeah, I'll change my team name. I want to cut this sandwich. <laughs> what, what do you want to name your team, Sean? Team Whiteaholics. What is it? Whiteaholics. 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 White. Wank. Wank. You got a okay. you got a black guy in your team. Oh wait, no, you, know, you don't. No, we don't. I, he said wankaholics. I think he said white aholics. No, he said team team wankaholics. I think he said white. Yeah. Like yeah, wow, it's white aholics. I thought this was supposed white. to be a diss on me, and I was like, what the fuck did I do? And it's not even a diss. Very damage you're addicted to me. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> wankaholics <laughs> anonymous, it is. <laughs> should be that should be a website, an affiliate of Fanboys Anonymous. That's gonna be a right first article about <laughs> Jessica Avery. <laughs> So right, I'm all good for the trades. Good. Everybody Fine. else? Yeah, everyone's good. Let's, we're done. Move on. All right, Wait, so I've got a couple different trade. trades there. <laughs> Do you actually have a trade? No, fuck it with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we have just a little bit over five minutes left, so you can still call in if you want to uh, throw some different little opinions out there uh, really fast. 760-512-7247. Or you can call in through Skype or that other number, which I can't remember off the top of my head, and I'm too busy to uh, click over and read that. But uh, we ran through the mailbag. We ran through some of the hot tags. We've got the Ask Him out there for anybody who wants to leave a comment below if that doesn't get answered by the end of this podcast. And just a little refresher for that. What was the name of the tag team Ryback was in after he was suspended for a wellness policy failure? Uh, We've got... Wait, wait. What? Can I do a trade? <laughs> no, never mind, never mind, I don't want to do it. Oh, you was fucking serious too, wow. I was, I was serious for a second and then I was like, shit, no, that's not the good, that's not the good Wyatt or, never mind. I don't want the ginger, I thought it was Luke. <laughs> I thought that Luke Harper was still uh, in the real no, I thought I thought he dropped Luke instead of Eric, and I was like, "Oh yeah. shit, why don't we pick him up?" I, I think I think Lou Harper is still available. <laughs> or Lou Harper, yeah. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. 
Oh, oh wait, I have my announcement to make. Oh, yeah, do that. Yeah. You want to knock All that right, out? So, yeah, well, why don't we do that now in, like, the last five minutes of the show here? That's uh, that's usually when the Raw main event starts, right? Come like, on. five minutes of the show is left. Yeah. <laughs> Say the thing. So, uh... We've been uh, we've been a little hard on a certain member of the staff lately, and uh, it's been hitting him pretty hard. So uh, I, I think it's about time we do something special. So I would like to take this moment to announce that this Monday here on Mega Powers Radio on the Raw Post Show, which obviously begins immediately after the end of Raw, if you are not there normally, you should be there this week because this week's edition of Monday Night Raw is going to be... Drew White Appreciation Night. <laughs> That's right. A whole night dedicated to our favorite youngster, our favorite tyke, Drew White. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and go for the midnight release of GameStop instead for the viewing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so stay tuned this Monday night, MegapowersRadio.com, for an evening where we all will be saying nice things and trying to cheer up young Drewski here. Yeah, it's going to go well. <laughs> damn it, this is gonna be terrible. You never know who might show up. Oh god damn it. Tow truck pig! Tow truck pig! <laughs> For a second there, I thought you were gonna say that you were gonna let Drew host the Monday Night Raw post. <laughs> that's that's, that's what I thought too. I was like, son of a bitch. No, I only let JD host the Raw post show. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you yeah. let JD host it. I think he just commandeers it. You know, when Philbin when, when, when fares. Called in, I thought we couldn't sit for and then I'm like, oh, wait, is that is that uh, JD? I was like, it's very oh. close. I wonder if he, he actually does the, live close to JD. He's from the 412, right? Where, where are you for? Where, where are you for? Where are you from, Ferris? <laughs> like, I know you're from the 419, uh, but what city? Toledo, Ohio. Oh shit, you're still in the fucking wow. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was expecting you to answer in the chat room, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> I can do that too. Here, let me uh, type it. Ferris has been uh, with us for a long time. I figured I'd keep him on the line. <laughs> that way he can experience what it's like uh, sitting back and doing all that kind of stuff. Oh my god, that was that was that was like a scary <laughs> oh, ghost. He's uh, from Toledo, Ohio. Spooky ghost. By the way, Spooky Ferris, ghost. I like how you posted it in the chat now, too, just to be like, I'll do it in the chat too. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I didn't actually get his answer. I was still being so, so shocked from his voice. So hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So Ferris, are you going to be tuning in this day for Drew and Appreciation Night? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yay! <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to think of ways now that I can express my, my gratitude and appreciation. I'm going to have to come up with something good. Oh, good. I, I can't wait. And, Drew, I just want to put it this way. Yeah. Remember what happened to Vince McMahon on Vince McMahon Appreciation Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> that means your bike's going to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that just means no. That means uh, I, I, you make the storyline where I die, but then someone kills himself and his family, so I have to come back and address that this is real and not fake. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> too soon, Drew. Too he said, soon. "Ooh, yeah." Oh, that, that, was, that was like that was like seven years ago. That's not too soon. We have just two minutes left in this show, so what I'm going to do is just uh, go person to person here. We're going to throw out some plugs for everybody, uh, things to pay attention to over the course of the next few weeks or whatever. Uh. Way go start off. For all your MMA needs, you can go to udmma.com, facebook.com slash udmma, and twitter.com slash udmma. Also, check out Addicted to Anime here on Mega Powers Radio. You can go to facebook.com slash Addicted Anime Fans for all updates and news on that. And over to you, Tony. All right, Sean? I ain't got naffle. <laughs> naffle, because I'm fighting copyright claims and shit. So just follow me on the Twitter, Shaughnessy two K three seven. Oh, you sound so defeated. <laughs> I am defeated. <laughs> Yo, t- if Tony can beat them, you can too. I'm tired. Just start I'm another at home. channel, get that suspended, and then your other one will get broken. Right? Yeah, that's how that's how it works. <laughs> Drew, any plugs you want to throw out there? We got a minute and a half left. You can follow me on tell at the Drew Crew. Fifteen seconds. <laughs> wow, you're awfully late on that, huh? <laughs> 90 <laughs> seconds 50 second videos it's like the twitter of videos my god it's gonna be huge Yo, it still was worth having tout just for that tensai video 
Oh, fucking a totally Asian racist one. That was awesome. <laughs> Caroline, anything you want to throw out? Just for everybody to keep checking Same Boys Anonymous all the time. And Peyton, one last. 60 seconds. Uh, plug for the uh, yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Once again, I just want to remind everyone listening out there, this Monday night on this very station, MegapowersRadio.com, join us immediately following the end of Monday Night Raw for our Raw post show, a live experience just like this. We invite you all to join us via phones and chat room and all that good stuff. And this Monday's edition will be Drew White Appreciation Night. So be sure to bring all your best Drew White material to the show. <laughs> I am actually really scared now because <laughs> this is going to be everyone just talking shit. Well, we have 10 no. seconds left in this show, everybody, so thank you for joining in to the live Fallout Fest episode of Smack Talk. We will see you with episode 158 next week, but this has been another Smart Out moment, and we are being counted out.